Please lift your hands wherever you are. All we want is that He's glorified. Now open up your mouth where you stand and glorify the name of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Open your mouth and glorify His name. He says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Open your mouth, give Him praise, give Him glory. Lift your hands to Him, magnify Him. I can't hear you, I can't hear you, I can't hear you. So fill my life till all they see It is you, Lord, glorify your name Fill my life till all they see It is you, Lord, glorify your name Fill my heart again Fill my life, say, fill my life till all they see is you, Lord. Glorify your name. Father, we thank you this afternoon. We bless you. We thank you for what you are going to do tonight. We thank you for your presence. Your manifest presence in this place. Change us by the power of your word. Transform us. Let us experience a shift from glory to glory. As by your spirit. Blessed be your great name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just hold the hand of your neighbor. Just to to. If you can. Open your mouth and let's just pray in the spirit for a minute. Let's pray in the spirit for a minute and just build faith. Just hold the hands of somebody and let's just pray in other tongues. Just for a minute or two. The Bible says building up your most holy faith. Praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. Habraho satara bahare tolo boro homo siaba. Membre Jesu doro boho siatara manda. Le karama rahato sanema roho sadema. Rahase baro tabahaske bahar. Shemam rahata bale harose mambahade. Me rohoska barahasi marohosia. Le herahaba sutara mande. Casting down imaginations and bringing under subjection everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Mele bohoro so doromosa Ze boho brahaska para hada Vele broho so dabrahani le moras Holy Holy Are you Lord God Just the strings Almighty Holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty? And worthy is the land, worthy is the land. 
You are holy. Yes, you are holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? What is the land? What is the land? Amen. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty. Who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty. Praise the Blessed be God Almighty, Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be, blessed be the Voices. Blessed be, blessed be just the voices. The Lord God Almighty, Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the Lord. Who reigns 
human opinions above the systems of this world above our might and our minds above every name that is named in the heavens and on the earth be lifted tonight in our praise and I ask Lord that your presence will be real in this place your word will come forth with light, with wisdom, with power to transform. And your name will be exalted forever. Let everyone that is sick here tonight or following online be healed. Let everyone that came in oppressed be set free. Let it be an anointing that breaks every yoke. And let your name be exalted forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Please clap your hands together. As you take your seat in the presence of the Lord. I said clap for the Lord. You can as well. Amen. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Welcome to Pneumatic. And I assure you that tonight we will be blessed in Jesus name. If you can hear me say a big amen hallelujah it's good to see every one of us again we had an amazing time last weekend we had the sisters conference and then rounded it up with a miracle service on sunday and i'm amazed at the things that god is doing in our midst can we just celebrate the lord with a big clap of praise just in honor for what the lord is doing in our midst hallelujah Amen. I thank God for what He's doing, and I want you to know that God is not done with us in terms of the manifestation of His power, His grace in our midst until He brings us to the place of fulfillment and to the place that He has designed for us to be according to His plan and his purpose the name of the lord be exalted forever in jesus name i'm so glad that we are back here continue our meetings pneumatic is a place where you experience it's not a program it's an experience of the wisdom the presence and the power of jesus christ so one of the things you can be assured of when you come here is that the word of god is revealed to you in simplicity yet with depth and that word is able to transform your heart your mind 
change your mindset introduce you to the ways and the patterns of the kingdom and enrich you with the wisdom of god for you to be a victor and for you to walk in your god ordained dominion on earth somebody say amen. amen and so we exalt the word of god in this place we take our time to teach the scripture because i can tell you something prophecy is good i love to prophesy because the bible says we should prophesy isn't it it says that all should prophesy but prophecy does not grow people up prophecy only lifts a man prophecy never grows a man and that's why one of the greatest things i love to do as a minister is to take our time to teach the word of god let people grow in their understanding of god enough of the ignorance enough of the shadow boxing that we do many of the things we are doing we are doing in a way of trial and error it's time for god to begin to raise christians that will walk with mastery that will walk in the place of perfection men and women that know their god and will be strong and do exploit i can tell you the truth the word of god is the greatest gift that a man can receive after salvation the spirit of god that you have in you will act in your life according to the amount of knowledge of the word of god that you have and that's the reason why i plead with every one of us whether you are listening here or you're following online to exalt the word of god and give space for constant reading studying and practicing of the scriptures amen if you are here say amen. amen you know now when you talk about the word of god everybody is quiet if if this was a miracle service now we begin to call names and all of that everybody be excited every great man you know in the kingdom was made by the word of god you cannot isolate the place of the word. true transformation happens from the word and you will know when you have been transformed you will know because the amount of light that you have received from the word of god is what will help you to outshine the darkness that is around you say amen to that you know jesus gave a parable about the sower and in this parable there were four categories of people who received the word there were four categories of people who received the word the bible says the seed which was the word fell first of all by the roadside and the bible says they were trampled upon and birds came and ate it he said the second one fell amongst rocks or fell in a rocky place and it grew up immediately but because it had no root it was scorched when the sun came up the third one fell among thorns and the bible says that the thorns grew with it and choked it but the fourth one fell on good soil and it was able to produce so every of this category of believers heard the word of god but it was the application that separated their results the bible says the ones that fell by the roadside are those who heard the word but immediately the devil came and stole it from them these are the christians that hear with one ear and it escapes from the other ear by the next sunday they've forgotten what was taught it's just religion as far as they are concerned just go to church attend the service listen and then come back they have the best jotters when notes have been taken in service their jotters are so new but the reason why it's so new is because it's hardly opened after that service are you hearing what i'm saying and the bible says it is possible that the devil can come and steal a revelation of the word of god that you have received the second one fell on rocky paths he said these are those who received the word of god with joy but they didn't take time to meditate on it they did not seek for understanding just because you heard doesn't mean you understood there's a difference between hearing and listening listening is hearing with understanding 
And what the word of God is first to do in your heart or in your life is to bring understanding. The Bible says, when the sun rose up, it was choked, it was scorched away. The sun there represents trials and temptations, represents persecutions. So these are believers that because they don't have root in the word of God, because they are not rooted in obedience to the word of God, they cannot stand tough times. They can't endure harsh times. They are quick to cut corners the moment they are faced with situations. And so you know that they hardly believed what they heard from the beginning. May it not be so for any one of us. In the name of Jesus. The third were those who received the word, but immediately they went out. The cares of this world. The Bible says in Matthew 13, it calls it the deceitfulness of riches. That means riches can deceive. What is the deceitfulness of riches? The deceitfulness of riches is deceiving a man to make him think that he has everything because he is rich. Or make a man think that he is fulfilled because of the abundance of what he has. And Jesus said a man's life does not consist of the abundance of what? Talk to me, pneumatic, of the abundance of what? A man's life does not consist of the abundance of what he has. Are we here? Now I'm asking you to complete the scripture because I know I teach you the word of God. Say amen. If the trumpet sound now, I will go to heaven boldly. I'll tell God I, I didn't hide anything from them except the ones I would have taught if you had given us more time. Amen. So you answer for yourself. Amen. You know, that's what Paul did in Acts chapter 20. He called the, the elders of the Ephesian church. He said, for two years, I did not hide anything from you. I even went house to house. Some of you got tired of me coming to your house. He said, pastor, don't come again. Amen. So um, I will stand before God bold because I'm teaching you the truth. And let me tell you something. What you are hearing now may not make any difference or any meaning in your life now but give yourself time i say it as one who is a student of the world give yourself time allow yourself to be schooled in the ways of god decide to practice christianity not just hang it as a name then you will know what dominion is then you will know that the promises of god are in him yea and in him amen it is true but then the Bible says that the fault were those who fell on good ground. They received the word in their heart and it bore fruit with patience. John chapter 8 verse 31, Jesus spoke to the Jews that believed in him. He says, if you continue in my words, then are you my disciple indeed. So there is a place of hearing, there is a place of doing, and there is a place of continuing many people who don't give anymore as christians it's not because they don't want to give but maybe the first time they gave they did not receive anything the first time the second time the third time they didn't receive anything so they say ah this thing is a scam but the bible says it's in continuing it says be not here as alone do deceiving yourself but be ye hearers and doers for whosoever continues in the perfect law of liberty james chapter 1 verse 25 Whosoever looks at the perfect law of liberty and continues daring, what did he say? He said, this one shall be blessed in all that he does. So before we go to the teaching tonight, I just want to admonish us to accept and hold on to the place of not only hearing the word, but continuing in doing it. Make a practice of the scriptures you know. Let it not end as, as a write-up on your jota. No. Internalize it. Meditate on it. The Bible says in, it, in his law, he doth meditate day and night. Keep thinking scripture until the format of your thought pattern is scripture. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? In fact, if you want to dupe somebody, <laughs> if you want to do play somebody while you let there be a scripture in your mind either to play the wayo well 
or to restrain you from playing it now understand what i mean what i mean is even when you are going astray let your mind be so saturated with the word of god allow it to reconfigure your mentality many of us especially young people these days now instagram is their mentor facebook which other one tiktok it's like there's a demon on that tiktok amen you just go on tiktok and you just see somebody dancing anyhow and that's what you spend your data for yes or no i said yes or no you are not talking you're pretending yeah and that's what somebody spends his time doing all day from tiktok he moves to he just watching <laughs> The Bible says, Whosoever looketh at the perfect law of liberty and continues, bring yourself to a point where you are obsessed with the word of God. This is how you grow as a believer. This is how you internalize truth till it becomes a living force inside of you. Jesus said, The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and life. Because he has internalized the word remember he said a i come in the volume of books that is written of me he had internalized the word of god and so everything he said carried life everything he did had power from god to pack up, back up the fulfillment and the manifestation and that's what happens when you keep yourself to practice the word of god it is my prayer that God will make us obsessed with the practice of his word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Are we ready for tonight? I want to teach on a, a subject that perhaps is not always taught in, in our churches today very little is thought about it and the lord laid this on my heart a few weeks ago i believe because god is preparing the end time church he's preparing us for the last day revival and for the coming of the lord and god is in these days very precise about the things that has to do with our holiness the things that have to do with our righteous devotion to god to his word and to his kingdom and so the lord began to lay this subject in my heart because a lot of us will need to hear this so that there can be adjustments in our lives and so that we can rise to higher dimensions in god amen the power of forgiveness the power of forgiveness the power of forgiveness no greater honor than to bow and kneel before your throne I'm amazed at your glory, embraced by your mercies, O oh Lord. I live to worship you. There is no, there is no higher calling. No greater honor than to bow and kneel before your throne. I'm amazed, I'm amazed at your glory, embraced, embraced by your mercy. So long I live to worship Sing there is no There is no Higher calling No Greater honor than to 
bow and kneel before your throne. I'm amazed at your glory embraced by your mercy. Ephesians chapter 4 The power of forgiveness Ephesians chapter 4 There are some kind of teachings before I come to do it I have to take out time to repent Spend time before the Lord Asking for mercy and purging myself Especially when you know that this is a teaching that starts with you, the preacher, first of all. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Verse 32. And be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Now when you read in context from verse 30 Paul was giving an admonition at the end of this chapter How that believers should not grieve the Holy Spirit By whom they were sealed in redemption And so everything that Paul began to write from verse 31 down to verse 32 Is connected to not grieving the Holy Spirit Some of the things that you should ensure of as a believer if you want to walk in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, if you want to ensure that the Holy Spirit is not grieved with you. To grieve means to cause pain, to cause sorrow, to hurt. Verse 31, he says, Let all bitterness. So these are the things that will grieve the Holy Spirit. These are the things that will cause pain to the person of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. He said, let all bitterness. And you know, the Bible says the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you forever. So you, you don't want to get him grieved if you want to continue in constant fellowship or communion with the Holy Spirit. He said, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And then verse 32 brings the conclusion. He says, and be kind to one another, tender hearted forgiving one another even as god in christ forgave you you remember there was a time peter asked the lord jesus how many times should i forgive my brother if he wrongs me seven times and i told you before that that statement that peter made was a statement coming from self-righteousness there's a difference between self-righteousness and unrighteousness these are two extremes that a believer should avoid Unrighteousness means you are one with the world. The ways of the world are your ways. You embrace impurity. You embrace um, anything evil. Self-righteousness is 
the righteousness that is carved out based on your own effort and remember that paul said i am what i am by the grace of god in other words thinking that your walk with god or your stand with god or your salvation was as a result of what you did to be saved that's also an extreme so peter was trying to sound self-righteous he said how many times will i forgive my brother if he wrongs me seven times in other words i try if i reach seven times after seven times i need to give him a slap amen now how many of you have been there where maybe you have a friend or somebody around you who has the habit of just annoying you or doing things that you don't like or maybe you are married and you have children and you give instructions and they go on to keep violating those instructions parents how many of us i tell you the truth if i was one i would not wait after the second time i reach for the king because i saw a scripture that says if you beat him with the rod he will not die you will deliver his soul from death so i know there are deliverances that are done without the anointing oil there are deliverances that are done with cane say amen, amen. now don't you go and lift the cane over a 13 year old child and say no as a parent understand there are steps there are phases in the life of a child and these phases comes with the wisdom of correcting the child amen a lot of parents beat their children without spending time per day to put the scriptures in their head that's abuse amen but i'm not here to do child campaign let's go to the word of god so jesus told peter he said i shortly i tell you 70 times 7 in other words according to heaven's mathematical equation you are supposed to forgive a brother who offends you 490 times per day at least and you know that is impossible because we only have 24 hours in a day even the devil will not offend you like that so what jesus was saying was be prepared to forgive at all times that's what he meant and he said in ephesians we have to forgive others because of because god himself forgave us matthew chapter 6 from verse 9 through to verse 12 14 and 15 jesus was teaching the sermon on the mount the values of the kingdom the principles of the kingdom and at this point he began to teach about prayers and he gave us rules that will govern effective prayer from verse 9 he says our father who art in heaven right hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven you know i'm quoting off my head now because this screen is bad it's not showing anything now give us verse 12 verse 12 of that scripture and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors verse 14 now after the prayer jesus went on to emphasize on forgiveness he says for if you forgive men their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you 15 but if you do not forgive men their trespasses neither will your father forgive your trespasses so prayer is a means of communicating with god and every time you communicate with god you want to be sure that god has heard you you want to be sure that it is an express flow in communication we all want to pray prayers that is able to move the hand of god and prayers that is able to occasion change on the earth and jesus is telling us if you must pray effective prayer then captured in your prayer is a state of heart ready to forgive he said for if you forgive men their trespasses your heavenly father will forgive you and for your prayer to be heard you must understand that you must be willing to forgive remember in isaiah chapter 59 the bible says my the hands of the lord are not too short to deliver you neither is his ears deaf to hear you please listen carefully tonight because many of us will see the secret behind some unanswered prayers in our families and in our lives i want to show you today 
one of the major secrets behind unanswered prayers and so jesus spoke about okay isaiah where i was talking about then he says not that is his ear heavy that he cannot hear but in verse 2 he gives us a secret to why god seems not to respond to his children he said but your iniquities have separated you from god and so it is important that when we communicate with god that we are able to lay hold of the forgiveness that has been made available for us through the shedding of the blood of jesus because when we receive forgiveness then we can have fellowship with the father that's what the bible says in first john chapter 1 in verse 7 he says, if we walk in light as he is in light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of jesus christ cleanses us from sin in verse 9 he says but if we confess our sin he is faithful and just to forgive us so the first thing you do to ensure that the prayer channel between you and god is guaranteed access is that anything concerning sin and iniquity is dealt with now it's not that for some people it's not that they have sinned or they still have sin is that now you are holding on to others you are holding on to the offenses of others and refusing to forgive and let go and because of that the forgiveness that you should receive from god is pending and when that happens i assure you under god speak in tongues for six hours god will not hear you are we here tonight so um, and I, I, we, we want to we want to be men and women of god that are able to move the hand of god that are able to see god move in our situations in our lives we want to experience optimal fellowship with god we want to walk with god and be able to hear from him part time and that's the reason why this subject today is very important so forgiveness affects our prayers a lot mark chapter 11 verse 25 to 26 jesus is still teach is still teaching but in this context he's teaching about the place of faith in prayer in verse 24 he says whatsoever things you desire when you pray believe that you receive and you shall have them so once you believe once the faith factor is registered it is automatic that you will get the answer of what you are asking for he said whatsoever you desire however there's a condition the next verse verse 25 it says and when you whenever you stand praying if you have anything against anyone forgive him now i like that the bible says if you have anything against anyone because naturally as human beings when bishop offends me it is expected that he should come and ask for forgiveness no be so so i wait for him as the ogre until he comes please sit down sir however the bible says if you have anything against anyone what do you have against him he offended you he wronged you jesus said don't wait for them to come and beg he says what forgive him not because you are foolish not because you don't know your right but in dealing with faith for the answers of prayer it is in your best interest to forgive him that your father in heaven may also forgive you so you see at the end of the day you forgive people not for them you forgive for you it is human listen it is human to cause pain to hurt or to be hurt as long as you are living in this world particularly that the scripture tells us that we live in the midst of a crooked wicked and perverse generation we are living in an evil and a wicked war first john 5 19 says the whole world lieth in wickedness it is normal it is abnormal for you to go through an entire week and there is not a human being that does something to you that causes you pain or offense including a brother or a sister it is abnormal because it's in the human nature to err mistake is part of the human nature sometimes they even offend you not knowing they have offended you 
So if you if if you are the type that you 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 don't know how to handle offense, then maybe we need to quarantine you in an island of your own. Nobody there, just you. If we do that, you'll become angry at the grass. Something will annoy you there. Or at best, just go to heaven. And you know what it means to go to heaven. You have to you have to kick the bucket. No be so. And I said that because I know there's somebody that doesn't like that three-letter word. So let me use an idiomatic expression there. So, but it is normal to find people who will offend you, who will hurt you, who will cause you pain. Some deliberately, some not deliberately. How do you live to handle this kind of situations? Especially now that we know that forgiveness plays a major role in your connection with God. The scripture tells us how that forgiveness was a demonstration of God's love for us. In Ephesians chapter 1 in verse 7 to 8. That one of the first acts, the first demonstrations of the love of God for us is the forgiveness of our sins. In him we have redemption through his blood and that redemption that has come through his blood has occasioned the forgiveness of sins in plural all kinds of sins according to now you know i thank god for for his mercy because as human beings there are things that people will do to you that you can forgive there are other things that people do to you that you can't forgive for instance, there are some young ladies they can forgive you of anything except if you serve them breakfast. See, they are laughing now. Oh, you think I don't know? I, that's, what, that's what they call it now. What? They say what? Serve breakfast. Brothers, you know the meaning of serve breakfast? Because I'm looking at some of these are brothers, Jew men. They are just praying in tongues. You don't know all these things. To serve breakfast means to serve breakfast. <laughs> Amen. So there are ladies that, you know, anything you do to them is okay, but don't serve breakfast. And so you see a lady who is already married five years into her marriage, but a young man who served that breakfast eight years ago, she's still holding it to her. In fact, if she sees anybody with the name of that person, But the Bible says that in him we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins. All sins. That means there is nothing you do that God cannot forgive you of. According to the riches of his grace. Verse 8. Which he made to abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Chapter 2 verse 4 to 7. Paul is still talking about the richness of God's love towards us that is demonstrated in the act of forgiveness. But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. Emphasis on the word great love. Even when we were dead in trespasses. In other words, we were given to sin. We loved sin and hated God. Many of you know that if not for God, you will not be here today. Some of us would have been in the clubs, clubhouses. Some of you would have been having your tenth girlfriend by now. Some of us would have become Yahoo Plus. In fact, you almost joined. It's just that that day. Amen. And all kinds of things that we would have been involved in. But thank God for His mercy that rescued us from the clutches of sin. You know, one, sin, one thing with sin is sin has a domineering ability. It has the ability to keep a man bound and under control. Paul said, the things that I want to do, I find myself not doing it. And the things I don't want to do, I find myself doing them. Why? Because another law is working in my body. He says, we were dead in trespasses and sins. But even while we were there, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Go on. And raised us up together. All of this happened before you gave your life to Christ. So. This was what he prepared. This was what he did for you. 
on the account of the sacrificial work of Jesus on the cross and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 7. That in the ages to come, why did he do all this? That he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Somebody say, Lord, thank you for your grace. Lord, thank you for your mercy. He did all that even before you decided to accept him as your Lord and Savior. There's a song I, I like. I'm the one that you have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. If you know you are a recipient of his mercy, sing. I'm the one that you have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. Let's sing it one more time. Say, I'm the one that you have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You know, many of us, many of us grew up in a pastor's house, a deacon's house. He were never astray before. So, but remember that, that what Jesus told the Pharisee, the story of two people. And he said, which one loved most? Between the Pharisee and the woman, the prostitute. He said, he that is forgiving more love more so sometimes especially if you are the type that has been swallowed up in sin at some point in your life and god rescued you and saved you you will understand the power of salvation you will understand the depth of grace of mercy and forgiveness the love of god that if not for that love by now you'd have been history One more time in just a minute, open your mouth and say, Lord, thank you for your love, for your mercy towards me, towards my own life. I did things that nobody would have forgiven. Nasty things, crazy things. But thank you. Hallelujah. So because God has demonstrated his love for us through the forgiveness of sins, he expects us to reciprocate that same forgiveness. That every time you forgive people, you are revealing the love of God that you are first a recipient of. The Bible says we love him because he first loved us. And he says if he loved us, therefore we ought to love one another. And in the demonstration of your love towards one another, forgiveness is prime. There are many believers that have been offended in church. There are many believers that have been offended by the lifestyle of another believer. There are many Christians who stop going to church because of the offenses caused to them by a fellow Christian. There are many Christians who are backslidden because of the offenses of pastors. Say if this is how they do in church, I know they go again. Even to just having the pastor's name on the newspaper, being involved in a scandal, say that's how all of them are pastors. Please be seated. You know, whenever I go around to preach as a young man, the narrative I see around is they don't trust young preachers, especially around here in the north. So when you enter the church, the elders they'll be looking at you with one eye like this. So are you not sure this is a package for one night? And you know, I like to dress well when I go out. So maybe that one too also implicates me. And so I discovered that, you know, from my standpoint, there's pressure to try to do the right thing and to try to live right just because you have to change a narrative that has been sold. There are many people who have been backstabbed by family members there are many people who have been gossiped there are many people who have been falsely accused if you go to our jails our jails houses and you know our penitentiaries you will find a lot of people there either awaiting trial for years or accused wrongly 
and they are serving jail sentence so you you find that we live in a world where because of these numerous offenses there are a lot of human beings a lot of believers who carry around bitterness who carry around hate in their heart who carry around pain in fact some no longer can trust anybody again simply because of what someone else did to them there are a lot of young ladies now the reason one of the reasons why their relationships are not working is not because they are not good people it's not because they are not beautiful but there is something in their life that makes them repulsive to men maybe because if you check the life of that young lady when she was six years her uncle abused her when she was 12 years another man abused her when she was 18 years she was gang raped by three people so she has a mindset a mentality that all men are evil so guess what she's planning to do just get pregnant and be a single mother god forbid to any sister in this house i'm just showing you what people can do this is the this is the product of a heart that is filled with unforgiveness in fact you can so harbor unforgiveness against people that the things of god you will no longer be able to pray you no longer be able to communicate with God because every time you go to your private time of prayer or go to your place of prayer, that, that, that picture comes to your heart again. The grief comes again. And that's the reason behind the backsliding effect of many believers. The things of God become cold to them. They come to church and sit dead like nothing is happening. Why? Simply because of the offense of another person. Even the ones that can still pray and do all that. But let me also show you another level of unforgiveness here. Say, I've forgiven him. But I don't want to have anything to do with him. Just day your lane. I will day. And I told somebody one time, I said, Anytime you claim to have forgiven somebody, and when you remember the incident, what comes to your heart the person say hate so i don't want to even think about the person i say then you have not forgiven because when you truly forgive when you remember the incident or the person is the love of god that has healed you out of that horrible experience that will reach out to the person i know why you are quiet we are talking about forgiveness today no be so all right The Bible also teaches us about forgiveness in the home, in the family. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 7 to 9 and chapter 4 verses 8. The Bible teaches about the practice of forgiveness. Remember that the unit of the church of God is family. Are we together here? Everything that happens among the churches or the body of Christ can be narrowed down to what happens in a family it says husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding giving honor to the wife in other words jj that's what yoruba calls it abi he said jj with the woman don't do anything that will offend her men say amen, amen. but i know your ego when they offend you you woman must apologize. You will not eat for two days. Hunger never kill you. Hunger never massage you. Those who are listening from US and other places, you know, what I mean is hunger has not dealt with you. When I say hunger never kill you. You know, when you speak like that, they don't know our pigeon, so you have to interpret for them. I'm telling you. That's why you know the man is a traditional man. Say in our village, no be so women they do. Say you go need down, apologize, key goats. Yes. Something that common sorry, you see, that's the reason why young young people, let me talk to you. Before you get married, take no matter how little the time is. I believe in God's time. I know that it can happen within one year and all of that. But it is important that you find out 
the level of mental transformation that your partner has achieved from the world. This person I want to marry, I know she's beautiful, she's a diva, she's a goddess. That's why you're running quick to get married. Find out, where does she come from? Are they traditional in their belief? Say now, please, don't be so they be. But the Bible says, husbands, dwell with them with understanding. Giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers may not be... So he's not saying that you should do it because you lose your place as the man. No. He's saying for your prayer's sake, this thing can affect your connection with your own head, which is Christ. Remember, the man is the head of the woman as Christ is the head of the man and God is the head of Christ. So, in keeping with having a good relationship with God, let's go on. Read down to verse 9. Finally, all of you, he's still addressing the family now, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. You see, when these things are put in place, forgiveness becomes easy in fact to wrong the other person becomes difficult and in case that happens forgiveness becomes within reach having compassion for one another love as brothers be tender hearted be cautious not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling but on the contrary blessing knowing that you were called to this that you may inherit a blessing the lord give us understanding in the name of jesus before we go to chapter 4 there's one of my favorite scriptures in the bible galatians 6 verse 1 he said brethren if any man amongst you be overtaken by a fault in other words when one of you misbehave and he falls he said you who are spiritual i like that phrase I like that phrase. Huh? You who are spiritual. Because the spiritual ones are the ones that know how to criticize most. They know how to castigate. Why did you do this thing? Eh? You know the year. With all the church where they go. Later you go to speak in tongues. This is a man talking to his wife. Oh. Later you go to speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Eh? Every day. He say you who are spiritual restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness considering yourself lest you also be tempted in other words knowing that you too you would have been the one if you are with me say amen, amen. chapter 4 verse 7 chapter 4 first peter verse 7 chapter 4 verse 7 but the end of all things is at hand therefore be serious and watchful in your prayers verse 8 and above all things have fervent love for one another let's read together from this point at the count of three one two three for love will cover a multitude of sins that means walk with love in such a way that you don't have to snap at every wrong that the partner does man truly is difficult though truly is difficult any small thing the person knows hey why did you the bible says love covers a multitude of sin and when sin is completely dealt with there is access spiritually so forgiveness is meant to be practiced beginning from the home from husband to wife from wife to husband start practicing it in your relationship now not that you people had an argument and for two weeks nobody spoke to each other all you did was you message her on whatsapp how are you fine you know that kind of chat then after two weeks one person now one person decides okay it's time to end and you are in a relationship oh. you never marry yet If care is not taking that kind, those that those kind of people, when they get married, once one person offends the other person, they will look for the other room in the house. And uh, have you seen that? Have you seen that before? 
is wrong is wrong if we must live as believers if we must be christ-like in our reflection god is teaching us and admonishing us in these last days where there are all kinds of wickedness hurt and pain here and there we must learn to walk with forgiveness people will offend you that's what the bible says in matthew chapter 18 it says offenses will come he said, but woe to the one through whom offenses will come. Let's get that scripture so we can read it. Matthew 18 verse... I don't know if I wrote it. I think it's verse 6 or verse 7. It's verse 6 or verse 7 thereabout. Okay, verse 7 and then verse 15 to 19. Matthew 18 verse 7 Woe to the world because of offenses For offenses must Come Offenses will do what? Must come He said but woe to that man by whom the offense comes Verse 15 However How do we undo the offense of a brother? Because it's difficult For someone who wrongs you And you go to the same church And see the person and then they are singing praise we lift our hands in the sanctuary and the person is lifting the hands and dancing and you you are just there looking at the person mm -hmm. they lift hands but that, that's what happens in the minds of many people and most times that person doesn't even know that you, you are there dying with the offense I hope as we are laughing, we are repenting in our hearts because some of us are laughing. We are, you are there right now. In fact, some people, especially with all due respect, because I never see men beef way past two months or one month. It's hard for you to see that kind of beef between brothers. If you see that type, they need counseling. They need prayers. Something is wrong. But with all due respect, women... Ah, she can even change department. So no, I can't stay in sanctuary keepers because no, I'll just I'll go to which one now? Worship team. I'll go to worship team. Because of offenses. I know I'm trying to preach with a lot of humor, but I'm doing that so that we can allow it to sink deep into our heart. God is purging his church, and there are things we have to get rid of in our hearts. If God must hear us. Verse 15. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. Who sinned? According to the scripture, who sinned? But who is to go to the person? For the ways of our Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord for the way for the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom I choose the way of the Lord is it the ways of God are past finding out to a normal human being, his ways are senseless. He sinned against me. And you are saying I should go to him. Hello. He said, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. Don't go and gossip him. He said, that's what they do for this church. See what this sister do me. I just, they walk out, they enter church. Now she passed with her car, pour me water. Eh? Because now let them get car. So the problem now is because of the car. It's not really because of. The Bible says, go to him and tell him your fault. He said, if he hears you, you have gained your brother. Go on, we are reading down to verse 19. He said, but if he will not hear, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Jesus is teaching us how to handle an offense here. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, 
By the church, he didn't mean go and spread it around all the members. No, look for the authority of the church, the leadership, pastor or a deacon or someone. He said, let him be to you like a hidden and a tax collector. That means this brother is unrepentant. As shortly I say to you, this is why I'm, tell, I'm teaching you how to handle offenses. He said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Verse 19 and the last. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. So because of your authority as a believer, because of your authority as the church of Christ on earth, the authority to change the heavens and make it find expression on the earth, because of the authority that exists between the agreement of two people, see that's the reason why you must make sure that you settle your differences with your brother. Because as we are united as believers, we have power and dominion on earth. The Bible says, whatever two of you shall agree at touching, it is done by my Father in heaven, if we don't harbor offenses amongst us. But today we have a lot of churches that pray, and their prayers don't go anywhere. That's the reason why when you look at the society or look at the territory within which the body of Christ is domiciled, you may find big churches, big congregations, but you still find immorality, you still find iniquity, you still find wickedness in the territory. That means the church does not have spiritual stature. That means the church in that location does not have strength, does not have power with God. And it can be because of little things as offenses bitterness in the heart of people there are people who carry bitterness and malice over their brother year in year out in church i wonder how they pray i know you are hurt i know you are pained i know that inside of you you seek revenge you seek justice because you were violated but the real problem is now leaving yourself with the pain and the hurt you are growing to become bitter you are growing and you, you soon that kind of heart even god cannot have access to it let me show you an example of what unforgiveness can do second samuel chapter 11 sorry chapter 13 the bible spoke about a young man named absalom he had a sister whose name was tamar and tamar was raped by her half elder brother who was Ammon by name all of them were children of david but different mothers and then absalom did not say anything he did not do anything about it but look at verse 22 verse 22 told us in that second samuel 13 that absalom neither spoke good nor bad to his brother now listen to me be careful be careful of believers who when you do something to them they don't talk they just keep quiet be careful be careful better run and go and ask for mercy oh. let me give you a story i read in a, you know one of chinua the late uh, is it late now chinua achebe is late what one of his books there was a story about a hawk the mother hawk sent the hawk to go and catch food. And you know their food, chicken. So the hawk came down and took the child of a dog back to his mother. And the mother said, you did well. He said, but what was the mother's reaction when you took the dog, the duckling? He said, the mother didn't say anything to me. Oh. She just looked at me and walked away. The, the mother hawk said, return that child back home. Oh, because there's something in that silence. So he returned the child back and took a chick this time that's the child of a chicken and when he came to the mother the mother said what did the mother of this chick do he said ah the mother cried shouted flew at me did everything the mother hawk said yes we can eat this one he said because that's all the mother can do <laughs> be careful be careful of people when you offend or when you hurt them they neither speak good or bad to you they are just quiet such was absalom he was he, he harbored it in his mind he was offended first of all because his father saw it and didn't do anything 
He felt like his father would have punished Ammon. He felt like his father would have sought revenge on his behalf. But nothing happened. Number two, he violated his sister. And it was a disgrace. And because Absalom did not forgive his brother, that unforgiveness grew into bitterness. From bitterness, it grew into hate. I will show you the four things that unforgiveness will do to a man. And in that same chapter, Absalom, a once gentle young man, became a murderer. He killed his own brother. It starts from here. We have a lot of i know somebody many years ago who if you offend him he will go to his diary and write it down on so so day no no don't laugh don't laugh on so so day this person did this to me yes over the years i hope the person has changed anyway many people will go to hell not because they didn't live righteous or holy things as little as bitterness unforgiveness would take many people to hell remember he said that they shall say lord in your name we casted out demons we healed the sick we prophesy what did jesus say to them he said i know you not depart from me ye workers of iniquity so we must begin to preach a christianity that is beyond charisma to character we must begin to preach a, a Christianity that is beyond face value to the heart. Because man looks at the outward appearance, but God checks the heart. Somebody says he's going on a retreat. He's going to talk to God about his destiny and he's carrying on forgiveness. Let me tell you the first thing to do when you go on retreat after Thanksgiving is repentance and forgiveness. That's the first thing to do when you go on a retreat. The year is coming to an end. Many of us will need to take personal retreats. Go back to God and take stock of the whole year. How did you go with God? What were the things you missed and how will you do better next year? What's God saying over my life next year? I'm showing you the protocol to get His presence and to hear from Him. After Thanksgiving, start with repentance. If possible, take a whole day to do that and live in the sorrow of that. Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, is it chapter 9 of chapter 8 where it says godly sorrow chapter 7 verse 10 say godly sorrow brings repentance don't rush and begin to ask for anointing ask for wisdom mm -mm, calm down repent and forgive all the people when you begin to forgive you will notice that the pain will become real and that's because when you are dressing a wound for the wound to be healed, you have to expose the wound. Are we here this evening? The power of forgiveness. By the next chapter in 2 Samuel chapter 14, Absalom had to run away from home. But somehow, King David was able to forgive him. And because absalom this is what unforgiveness did to absalom when absalom came back remember he was angry at his father for not doing anything even though the father forgave him for killing his own son absalom became the one who led a revolt against his own father one of the things he did was he took the advice of ahitophel he took his father's concubine and slept with them before the whole israel this is the monster that unforgiveness does in the life of a man some of you are listening to me right now and let me tell you something with all this teaching that you see me doing eh, you will think that people are repenting right now but there are people I have discovered that have a way of closing their heart and going back after the teaching the same say apostle you don't know what it means you are talking out of you don't have experience say me i should just let go so don't think with all this power preaching that i'm doing that everybody's repenting yo but it's my desire that we all repent and let go of any offense that has been against us in the name of jesus four things that unforgiveness does to a man and then we'll pray number one unforgiveness the dangers of unforgiveness number one it hinders prayers We've read it already in scripture. Number two, it afflicts with pain. 
unforgiveness afflicts a man with pain. The person who wronged you is no longer suffering. You are now the one suffering. Inner pain. Number three. The dangers of unforgiveness. It causes one to become bitter and filled with hate. You are bitter at people. All men you hate. All women you hate. There are some young men because of how their stepmom treated them when they were growing up. They don't like women again. So now somebody's daughter who they are dating is suffering. Because they are carrying a wound. This is what unforgiveness can do. Hate. Bitterness. And then number four, finally. It gives access to demonic oppression. Matthew chapter 18 from verse 21 to 25. It gives access to demonic oppression. This is the story of where Peter asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive my brother? And Jesus said, 70 times 7. Then Jesus gave a parable. If you read down, the whole reading is from chapter verse 21 to verse 35. But let me save you because of time. Jesus gave a parable about a, a servant who owed his master a huge debt. Let's say he was owing the master $10,000. And the master called him and said, since you will not pay me my money, let them sell your family, sell your wife, sell your children, sell your house, sell everything, and give me back my money. And the Bible says the servant fell before the master and pleaded with him to be patient. And the Bible says the master was moved and forgave the servant everything. He didn't even say, okay, I give you time to pay. He said, take everything and go, I forgive you. Ten thousand dollars. That's good money. How much is that, sir? In Naira. That is good money. Say amen. amen. You don't want to say amen, but amen. that's the kind of money that can change your life if you have wisdom. And this servant, after being forgiven, this huge debt, went out of the palace and saw his fellow servant. All of us will be servant who, just because you, you are owing me now a little debt. He said he held him by his neck. That's what the Bible say. Held him by his neck. No, I can't hold you by your neck. He said, pay me my money. You know, some of I mean, I'll mean, <laughs> go change them for you. If you know, I'll go change them for you. And the servant pleaded with him like he did to his master. But this one refused. He said, throw him in prison until he pays everything. And the Bible says, when the master of this servant heard it, he was angry at the servant. And here was what he said. He said, let him be delivered to the tormentors. New King James said, torture us. King James says, tormentors. Until he pays the debt. Verse 33. Sorry, verse 34 now. After the story, this is what Jesus said. Uh, uh, give us verse 35, brother. I think that's the end. So my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. Can I tell you something? The word tormentors there in the Greek is the same word for demons. Yes. So what he's saying here because the tormentors there had to do with prison. And Satan and his demons are known for keeping men in prison and keeping them under bondage. That means when a man harbors unforgiveness, he has created access for demonic imprisonment, demonic oppression in his family, in his life, because of unforgiveness. There's a story about a, an island called Fiji Island. How that they were primitive people in that island. And many years ago, some group of white missionaries went to that land to preach the gospel. They went there in peace with love. And when they came, the natives of that land caught all of them and killed them. And the last one before he died made a pronouncement which was supposed to be like a curse. And they killed him anyway. Years had gone by. One generation after the other. They were experiencing poverty, hardship, sickness and death of every kind. The river around them, the sea around them, all the fishes there had disappeared. 
And fishing was once their livelihood. So if there was no fish, that means they were not surviving at, at, on anything at all. And this play continued from one generation after another. And then years later, somehow they got to know what their ancestors did. And then they sent a message, an envoy, to the family of these white missionaries. By this time, it was their great-grandchildren. Summoned them and pleaded with them to have mercy on them. And according to the story, when the, the great-grandchildren decided to forgive, they forgive, made a pronouncement and a blessing on the island. And it was said according to that story that almost immediately, the fishes in the sea began to come back to the island. The sickness and the strange death that has plagued them for many years was taken off. The gospel invaded that land. And to the glory of God, that island is one of the Christian nations on earth today. Men like Pastor Benny Hinn have gone there to do crusades. The power of forgiveness. What are the four things that forgiveness will do and will be done tonight? Four benefits of forgiveness. Number one, it brings healing. It brings healing. Forgiveness brings healing. Not only physical healing, but emotional healing. A healing of the heart. I think it's in James chapter 5 where it says, Confess your fault one with another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Right? Number two, it precedes restoration. I said number one, it brings healing. Still on number one, the Bible tells us in Psalms 103 verse 3, who forgives your iniquities and heals your diseases. So that means the power to forgive is the same power stretched forth to heal. Number two, it precedes restoration. Do you want to experience restoration? Has the devil stolen anything in your family? If you truly desire restoration, then there must be forgiveness. Job chapter 42 verse 8 to 10. Job forgave his friends and prayed for his friends. And the Bible says in verse 10 that the Lord turned the captivity of Job. The Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. How many of us want to experience restoration? How many of us know that there are areas in your life or in your family or in destiny where you have been robbed by the devil? Then check and be sure that there is forgiveness in your heart. Restoration. Number three, it activates deliverance. It activates deliverance. I have discovered in the deliverance ministry there are cases i've dealt with i remember i don't know maybe the lady may be hearing online now or she may hear the message later but i remember i was to pray with a lady one time tongue talking christian wonderful lady have problems in relationships and all of that and so when we began to discuss the holy spirit took me deep into her life and i discovered that when she was six years she was abused by a neighbor sexually now and that abuse became a pattern in her life and so she held grudges and unforgiveness against the men who did that to her many years later the people that come around her are always most of the time people from the other faith and when they come all they want to do is just have their way with her and go this was what unforgiveness turned her into and god told me he said until she deals with that unforgiveness she cannot be set free from that spirit of rejection and hate that had come into her life and as soon as i told her she broke down in tears and began to weep so i led her to pray some prayers of forgiveness after that prayer in less than five minutes she was delivered there are many people whose deliverance is held on because of unforgiveness. Some of you may even need to forgive on behalf of your ancestors. On behalf of your late mother. She died and held that neighbor in the village in her heart. 
and you wonder why doors are shut over the family tonight if you want to experience deliverance we must yield to forgiveness and finally forgiveness releases answers to prayers forgiveness releases answers to prayers we already read that from the beginning he said forgive so that your prayer will be heard for if you forgive your heavenly father will forgive you once your sins are forgiven your prayers are heard from heaven there was a man called joseph in the bible his brothers tried to kill him and later sold him into slavery and because of what they did to him for 13 years he suffered but finally god remembered him and brought him to the throne and then you know life will always create a, a situation where those people that wronged you and thought they got away with it the table of life will always turn and bring them right back to you and god will be watching to see whether you will serve them breakfast or you will show them mercy because a lot a lot of people say hey yes what they did to me five years ago i mean i've handled a lot of people in fact they even break into tears say apostle no i can't forgive i can't i've handled people like that yes and we had to suspend the prayers for one week i said okay take one week go he said no when i called the person the person said oh. i say ah, ah, up to now he said, apostle, he me. and you wonder why the prosperity all the prophecies are not fulfilled you wonder why there's a blockage to your promotion you wonder why there's a blockage why i've sown seeds i've prayed i've done all kinds of sacrifice why is there a blockage could it be unforgiveness that's why if you are a man of god you need the eyes that see and the ears that hear otherwise you will waste your time praying prayers when forgiveness can just settle it they will not tell you what they did years before they will just come just as i am and then you'll be praying and suffering there so one of the things i do when i have to pray if there is a deliverance case or there is a case that seems stubborn to prayers i try to find out is there an issue of unforgiveness even among husband and wife and i ask myself when if you as you sleep that night and your soul is required of you and you die what excuse will you give god i'm sure you will tell god like adam says the woman that you gave to me now i wonder how people live their lives especially in this critical time in the last days where we don't know jesus can come anytime well, i hope you know peter told us in second peter chapter 3 he said don't mind those people who used to say forget when, when is this coming we have been waiting see. don't live like that it can come anytime the hour no man knows so you live every day as though it's the last and you don't take unforgiveness in your heart there are some people here tonight and online that the person you need to forgive is god yes because when your cousin sister died in your hands in the hospital you prayed and fasted you sowed seed and god didn't heal her so you are offended at god you feel that god 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 i hope you forgive god this night too there are some people you if unforgiveness is against you yourself you need to forgive yourself but when they came to joseph it was an opportunity for him to just pay them back in their own coin but the bible says joseph forgave his brothers and in chapter 50 of genesis when jacob had died the brothers of joseph were afraid they thought joseph would pay them back they didn't know that joseph had forgiven them long ago otherwise joseph wouldn't have prospered the way he prospered in egypt look at what happened to joseph the bible says he saw his children's children to the fourth generation he remained a prince in egypt all the blessings of forgiveness and the bible says when they they, they made a lie they created a lie and sent to joseph and said joseph before our father died he said that you should forgive your brother blah, 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 blah. joseph the bible says joseph wept he was not weeping because he remembered what they did it was tears of joy 
how would you think that I was still holding you to my heart till this time? This night we will forgive you. This night you will have to let go whoever has wronged you. Some of you, you are angry at that lady because she broke up with you. You thought everything was going on well together and you were going to get married to her. She broke up with you. Now she's married to another person and you are bitter. It's not every young lady that comes into your life that will be your wife. Oh. Some of them, God brought them for different purposes. And to the ladies, not every young man that is nice to you that will be your husband. No. Some of them are just helpers of destinies. Am I talking to you? Lord, I need you in my life. Lord, I need you in my life today. Now listen. Me, myself, I just forgive somebody now three times. I told him, anytime I'm preaching, you should sit on the seat. And so he, he went back the first time and while I was preaching, yeah, while I'm preaching to you, I was angry. I was already planning what I would do. Amen. So I forgive you, you sit down. <laughs> Amen. Forgiveness sets you free. You stop living in the pain of yesterday. Stop living in the prison of the past. Joseph told them, he said, what you did, you meant for evil. But God turned it for good. If you didn't sell me to slavery, I would not be here. You thought you were doing me evil. You thought it was good riddance to bad rubbish. But God was sending me ahead to preserve. If Joseph was not in Egypt, there would have been no Messiah. Because Jacob and his descendants would have all died in the famine. So some of you, that pain that they cost you, that money that they stole from you, some of you were defrauded. But all those things happened because it was an occasion to create a miracle in your life. And that's why we need to let go this night. A lot of unforgiveness in church. A lot of people harboring all kinds of things in their mind. All kinds of beef everywhere. And we pray year in, year out. And we wonder why the prayers don't seem to make Or hit deliberate marks in the spirit. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. God is going to purge us this night. My prayer is that after all this shouting, somebody will not leave this service with their heart the way it is. Some of you will need to go back and forgive the people of your childhood. Some of you were abused verbally, physically. Some of you lived with relatives who kept abusing you physically. They kept telling you, you will not amount to anything good. They inflicted so much injury on your mind. And now you have grown up. You are a nice person, but you are bitter to others. Let go. And be free. Your healing, your restoration, your deliverance is ahead of you. God will answer that prayer in no time. If only you let go. Like I said, I will say it again. Some of you need to forgive God this night. I don't know if it's possible. Pastor, you're welcome. I don't know if it's possible, but it's true. I've, I've met with people who, I, they hold God. Say, Pastor, where was God? Yes. Years ago, I went to pray with a man. His wife miscarried a baby. I'm sure maybe the wife is listening now. She miscarried. No child. I went to pray with them, and God told me there's unforgiveness in the man's heart. And when we began to search, I discovered the man lost his father. His father died in his hand. And all the while they prayed and did everything, nothing happened. The father still died anyway. And the man told me, he said, where was God? And I knew why they didn't have a child. Spoke to him, pleaded with him. We prayed, he forgave. And then that same year, the wife took him. They have a bouncing baby boy now. They even have the second pregnancy now. You see what forgiveness can do. So where was God when I was going through pain? I had to drop out from school because there was no money. I prayed, I cried. 
If I had known, I would have just been like my friends who are in the world. I can get it easily. But tonight, will you let go? Rise on your feet. We are going to pray this evening. Without you, I can do nothing. Play for me. Without you, there's no life to live. So I need you in my life today. Lord, I need you in my life. Lord, I need you in my life. One more time. Lord, I need you in my life. Without you, say, without you, I can do nothing. Without you, there's no life to live. No, I need you. you thank the lord for what you have heard this evening bless him for the word that you have received for some of us the word has come to correct for some to inspire for some to encourage can you tell him thank you thank you for some it has come as a rebuke thank you for the ministry of your word in jesus name now i'm going to give you two minutes you can kneel down if you want to you can keep standing if you want to but this is going to be a very serious moment i want you to search your heart as you pray whether you are listening here or you are following online i want you to search your heart as you pray is there anyone who has offended you some of you may need to reach back into your past to your childhood to your teenage age some of you before you got married some of you are already elderly now but there are people 30 years ago 40 years ago that you are still holding on to your mind and i want you to cry and ask the lord for grace and at the same time forgive them whatever it is if possible mention their name and say so so person i let go of so so thing that you did in the next two three minutes we are going to leave everything that has been an offense against us everything that has been an offense in our heart we are going to surrender to god and we are going to forgive every one of those people some of you they are your boss your boss in your place of work your superior some of you your colleague some of you um, your, your, your subordinate whoever they are some of you including your pastors your pastor something happened to you you felt your pastor should support and side you and he didn't not because you were not right but because he needed to make peace and now you are offended some of you your family member was molested was cheated and you are still holding the grudge to heart i know it is painful but I give you the next two minutes with the word that you have heard tonight. I want you to open your heart and your mouth and release those people right now while they just play for us. In the name of Jesus. In the mood of prayer, please open your mouth and your heart and just let go of every offense. Release those people. Release them. Eyes closed everywhere search deep into your heart yes i know it was painful but it's time to let go 
Stop living in the past when God has a glorious future for you. Stop living in pain when God has healing for you. Stop living in, in, in poverty when God has restoration for you. Come on, somebody talk to God. From the depths of your heart, talk to Him. From the depths of your heart, talk to Him. Talk to God. Say, Lord, I let go of this issue. I let go of this unforgiveness. I let go of this event. Yes, I know I was hot. I was wrong. But tonight I repent. If you can forgive us our trespasses, Lord, I decide to forgive all who have trespassed against me. I decide to forgive all who have debt us to me. Now I'm going to share a story with us and then we are going to pray. This time around you are going to stand on behalf of your family and release any form of unforgiveness that is held in your family whether by your, the generation of your parents your grandparents your ancestors or even amongst your generation you are going to stand as a priest i told you four things that forgiveness does number one healing number two restoration number three deliverance number four answered prayers let the prophecies hanging over your families be fulfilled by an act of forgiveness that you display. Many years ago, my father, my biological father, he may be listening now online. I remember I was a toddler at that time. And we remember the church where he was pastoring, the branch church. Some of his members, some of his leaders ganged up against him. And they called the Jew. They raised a false accusation to him, to the Jew, and they told the, G, the general Vasia that he ate church money. Not really because he did, but because there were people amongst them trying to control the church, and my father would not allow them. So they decided to raise a false. And remember, the Bible says, "Do not raise a false accusation against your neighbor." So we were in church that Sunday, and Jew just came in. We didn't know. We thought it was a surprise visit. We didn't know it was a surprise judgment. After the service, they sat my father in front of the whole church. True story. And they brought out all their accusations. And he sat quiet. His children were there. Imagine you seated before an entire church, before your wife and your children, and you are accused of things you didn't do. And he was quiet. And when they had finished the accusation, the Jew will say, do you have anything to say? He said, well, he has nothing to say. But if it is regarding church projects that they are accusing him of, he didn't do it alone. No. His assistant pastor is here. So he can give account. And then the assistant pastor stood up. You know, when God wants to vindicate you, ba, he will make the enemy think that their plans have been concluded and it will succeed. The assistant pastor too stood up, went to the office, brought a file. When they opened the file, even to nail that they used, had received, they now found out that the church was owing my dad 20,000 
and the assistant pastor 10,000. I'm talking about 2001, 2002. 20,000 was big money that time. And then the accusers were quiet. But you know what? That was when I began to learn true forgiveness. He forgave all of them. And I remember one of them who was so co a so-called dickness. I remember there was a time her husband almost died. He was an unbeliever. He doesn't come to church. But I remember that time my father would travel. Those of you who know Lagos very well. You know Navy Town. From Navy Town almost to Iyanasashi. That distance. Checking the man in the hospital. Spending sleepless night praying. This is the husband of somebody who accused you wrongly. And we grew up learning that. You want to go far. There's no need to hold on to people. You are going to pray for two minutes. And as you pray, you are praying and standing on behalf of your family. If there is anyone in your bloodline that has held on to unforgiveness against any individual, against any family, against any village or community, whether in your generation or in the generation of your ancestors, you are going to stand as a priest and by the authority that you have in the name of Jesus, release those people now in the name of Jesus and declare that that the impediment that the enemy has placed on your family by reason of unforgiveness be removed open your mouth and pray so let my heart be the temple of your spirit let my spirit fill the world of your embrace let me be a holy habitation where your spirit is pleased to dwell Oh Lord, I love to know your glory I want to offer the sacrifice of prayer Fill this temple, Lord, with your spirit once Oh, Lord, I long, oh, Lord, I long to know your glory. Come on, pray. Let them go. Release them. Release them. Release yourself from the pain. Yeah, I need it. Oh, I need it. Oh, I need it. Oh, I need it. Oh, I need it. I wanna be just like you. I wanna be just like you. Just like you. Just like you. 
Put your right hand on your chest. I'm going to pray generally for us. But before I pray, if you are here and Jesus is not Lord and Savior over your life, or perhaps you used to be born again, but because of the pressures of this life, you backslided. Or maybe tonight the message of unforgiveness, or forgiveness rather, has pricked your conscience. And you realize that your spiritual life has been going down because of unforgiveness. And you want to rededicate your life afresh to the Lord. I want you to come to the front quickly, quickly, and then we'll lead you to the Lord. If you want to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, you want to accept and receive into your heart, or you want to rededicate your life afresh, you used to be saved, but you don't understand what has been happening with you, and you want to make amends with the Lord, wherever you are, God is calling you. Please walk to the front quickly and we'll pray for you. For the rest of us, just put your right hand on your chest. I'm going to pray a prayer for us right now. I come to thee in the cross, in the cross. Be my glory ever till my righteous soul shall find rest beyond the Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here that has been hurt, that has gone through pain, that has been a victim of sorrow, of regret, of grief, of hardship, of turmoil, because of the offenses of man, because of the offenses of a brother. Father, I pray tonight, that the grace that forgives will rest upon them and as they have chosen to let go of the offense and to forgive the individual i beg your pardon the individual i pray father that the healing power of your love will flow in their hearts right now Amen. heal them of the pain Amen. heal them of the hurt Amen. heal them of the sorrow let every prison that they have been kept in by the devil and by his agents because of unforgiveness be broken now let those prisons be open now and i command deliverance for your children i can't hear your amen i command deliverance for your children in the name of jesus christ let every form of affliction that came into their life because of unforgiveness be removed from their bodies be removed from their minds be removed from their souls be removed from their lives be removed from their families in the name of jesus 
And I declare restoration. Every prayer that you have prayed that is hanging. Because you have chosen to forgive. Tonight receive the answers of your prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare the ministry of angels over your life from today. May you have on you on unbroken access to the heavens. Day and night as you call upon the name of the Lord. May you find answers. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your great name.